hey guys welcome back so in this video i'm going to show you step by step on how to model a complete residence with sketchup and with some awesome plugins so you will learn how to use flex tools extensively and also profile builder 3 to create this residential house we'll follow a very streamlined workflow where we will organize the model properly so that you get the best results and also you can use the same model in the future to create documentation and also some awesome visualization in Enscape for SketchUp. This is a more advanced course but it can also be taken by beginners as I explain every process step by step. And if you like to follow along on every lecture, I would highly recommend that you purchase Flex Tools as they have a Black Friday sale happening at the moment and you would get about 30% off on the product. There's also a sale for Profile Builder 3 and all the links you would find in the description. Now, without further ado, let's jump straight to the lectures. This is about three hours long. Enjoy and cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the various shortcuts that I personally use in my daily SketchUp workflow. So the number one shortcut that you need to learn is the hide rest of the model shortcut. So we're going to assign the shortcuts first and then I'm going to show what each of these shortcuts do. So let's go to windows and go to preferences. Click on shortcuts and the first one you're going to assign is called hide rest of the model. Type in hide and when you go to the bottom you'll find this view slash component edit slash hide rest of the model. So I've given a shortcut called J. If you want to assign a shortcut, simply click here, press J on your keyboard and click the plus button. I've already assigned, so this is why this dialog box is showing up. I'm going to press yes. Now the next shortcut is edit slash hide. So I've assigned F2 for edit slash hide. Unhide all, which is F4 on your keyboard. Unhide last is F3. So three shortcuts here and then hide rest the model. Now the other shortcut which I'm going to use is something called X-ray mode. So I've assigned the shortcut Y for this. You can simply click here, press Y on your keyboard and press the plus button. So apart from these, I also use the camera slash parallel projection shortcut, which is Alt W and the front view, which is Alt F and finally the top view, which is Alt plus T. You need to press Alt T and then it will show up here and make sure to click on plus. So once you've added all of your shortcuts, in case you want to use it in the future, you can export these shortcuts out. It's called a SketchUp data file and then you can re-import it in other systems or in future versions. So once you're done with this, press OK. So let's start with the first shortcut, which is hide rest of the model. Now, for example, if I want to edit a group here and I want to edit the edge face or this face, the face here, right? You need to press J on your keyboard. So what that does is it hides the rest of the model and it only shows the group which is active, as you can see with this bounding box. So now if I make something here, maybe a rectangle or something like this, an abstract shape. And if I press escape, you can see that I've added it to the side face of this group. So it helps when you have a lot of groups inside your model and you need to edit a specific model or group. Now, if I enter this group and press J, I can't really edit that side face. So this helps in hiding the rest of the model. It simply toggles between the main model and the group which is active. So you can start using the J tool as well, hide rest of the model tool. And next, which I can use is something called the X-ray mode. Sometimes in SketchUp, it's difficult to select certain faces and edges. So we use the X-ray mode. So if I press Y on my keyboard, you can see it's a wireframe mode. And now you can see the back part of the faces as well. So now you can enter the group and you can also select the back part faces and the below face or whatever it is. It helps when you're trying to move stuff, decorating your room. And if there are too many things in your space, then it would be difficult to move stuff. So use the X-ray mode to see things which are inside your model. All these shortcuts would make more sense once we start modeling our room. The next shortcut is hide and unhide. So if I want to hide this and edit it later, I can press F2 so it's hidden. 
And if you want to see what is hidden in your model, you can go to view and click on hidden objects. So you can see that this mesh means that this model is hidden. I'm going to not show the hidden objects. And if I want to unhide using the keyboard shortcut, the last object which I hid was this box. So I can press F3 to unhide the last object. And if I hide a lot of stuff and I want to show all the objects which I've hidden, you can press F4. So that would unhide all of your items. So these are the main shortcuts that I personally use. And apart from that, like I mentioned in the previous few videos, if you want to go to your plan view, the best way is by going to your parallel projection and then which is Alt W and top view, which is Alt T. And you can also switch between perspective and parallel projection in the top view as well. There's also the front view. So this helps in modeling faster. This workflow is generally used in 3ds Max, but in 3ds Max, you generally have four windows, whereas in SketchUp, you can only work with one viewport. So I hope you found this video useful. And in the next video, we're going to finally start creating our room. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we will import our CAD plan and set it up for our modeling process. So to start off, I'm going to use architectural inches for this workshop because this project is based in the US. So we will need to use architectural inches and also a quick note is that in the US, they generally consider this basement or the ground here as the first floor. So we have three floors in total as per US laws of counting floors. So this is first floor, second floor and third floor. You keep that in mind as we progress through this workshop. So let's open architectural inches. All right, so we've opened SketchUp. So first step, what we need to do is delete Neeraj, which is our SketchUp figure for 2022. And Neeraj also comes with some materials. So we need to delete those materials. So go to Windows, Model Info, go to Statistics and click on Purge Unused. So this will delete any of those extra materials in the scene. And then it's a good idea to save this file out as well. So go to File, Save, give a name for your file and click on Save. All right, so now we can bring in our file into SketchUp. So let's go to File, Import, select the site plan from your exercise files and click on Import. Now this CAD plan was drafted in inches, so it should come in at the right scale as well. So let's check if it is in the right scale. So use the tape measure tool, which is T on your keyboard. Click once and when you hover on the other side, you can see it's one foot which is the right size of the external wall. All right, so the first step after you import the CAD plan is to delete all the CAD layers because we will use our own set of layers. So what you can do is select the first layer, which is new structural grid, hold shift on your keyboard and select the last one. Then you can right click and click on delete tags. So you can assign another tag. So you're going to assign the untagged, which is the default tag in SketchUp to these lines autocad lines so click on ok so now you can see everything goes into one tag you can't hide it because that's the only tag in the scene so what i'll do now is i'll create some tags so i'll click on the plus button here and let's call this a dash first floor a dash second floor and a dash third floor all right, so now what I need to do is I will just zoom in to the last floor in the AutoCAD file, which is this floor. This is the third floor. So I will need to enter this group. So now we are inside the CAD group. Let's select all these lines here. And now what you can do is you can change the tag. So once you selected the lines, just go to tag here and select third floor. So now if I hide third floor, that plan gets hidden. It's also a good idea to sort of select all of these lines, right click and click on make group, or you can use a shortcut, which is G as well. So I've made the third floor a group and also assigned it to the third floor tag. It's also a good idea to assign the group to the tag as well. So you can go to third floor here as well. You can either assign the group to the tag or you can assign the lines inside the tag. Now let's come here. Let's enter this group again. You're already inside the group. If you want to know if whether you're inside, you can see this dash line, which means we are inside this group. Let's select these lines here. 
all right and let's change the tag second floor make it a group so let's select all these lines again this g to make it a group and then assign the group to second floor as well so we have second floor we have third floor and finally we need to assign first floor as well so let's select all of this make it a group and change this to first floor yep so we have all our plans in place so let's hide the second floor and third floor now we don't need these extra lines in or which is the, actually the site plan because we already have it in the first floor so what i will do is i will just select all of these and click on delete similarly here as well and then this line here as well all right so now if i switch on third floor second floor everything looks good let's move these plans closer to the main plan as well so i'm just going to move it in and we are almost done finally it's also a good idea what you can do is just maybe just select the site plan that is so i will just select all of these lines here so make a drag selection and i will hold ctrl shift and deselect this plan and this plan so only our site plan is selected and let's create a new tag call this a dash site and we can assign it using the entity info here or we can also use the tag tool so let's use the tag tool make sure a site is selected and then simply click on the line to assign that tag all right, so now we have all our lines and plans assigned to tags, which helps us stay organized while modeling. Finally, what I'll also do is move this closer to the origin of SketchUp, and we are good to go. So, the next video, we'll start modeling the walls for our project. So, I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So, now we can start modeling our plan. So before I start modeling, what I'll do is I'll go to the top view. So Alt W and Alt T, which means I'm going to palette projection mode and the top view. We can also go to camera, palette projection and standard views top. So as you can notice, I've assigned shortcuts to all of these commands here. And if you would like to learn how to add these shortcuts, just go through the start of the course. The shortcuts video of this course. All right. What I'll also do is I'll go to my scenes here on my default tray. And I'll add a scene and I'll rename this to plan view. So this way when I orbit out and click on plan view, it always goes back to that scene. Now let's start modeling our walls. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So press R on your keyboard. It's also a good idea when you model stuff to always model in the untagged layer. And then you can change the layer of that component or group later so let's create the rectangles so i'm just going to click once click twice create the rectangles create the rectangles for our walls all right so we're done creating the main rectangles now what i'll do is i'll select the plan and hide it so you can press f2 to hide or you can press Ctrl 1, whichever shortcut you're using. Now I'll select all these lines, right click, and click on Make Group. Now I'll enter the group, go back to the plan view, and I'll press J to toggle visibility. And now I'll use the eraser tool and delete all these intermediate lines. I'm just dragging, clicking and dragging to delete those lines in between. So this way, when I extrude the face, it will extrude as one entity. All right, so I've deleted most of it. We have one line here. Finally, let's use the push-pull tool. Click once and give a height of about 9 feet 6 inches. So the wall generally is about 9 feet 6 inches. And then we have a 6 inch slab sitting on top of the wall. Let's do the same for the columns here as well. So let's push this up and double click 
to push that face. So when you double click on the next face, it will take the height of the previous extrusion that you've given. Finally here as well. So double click to get the same height. So as you can notice in this wall, I have not given the wall for the door side because we will add the door later and then add the lintel later as well. So I will show you two ways to model the walls and show you which is the best way to work faster with SketchUp as well. So this is the traditional way. So we'll use the first floor to model traditionally. And if we go back to the plan view, we'll use the first floor and second floor to model faster by using flex tools. So in this case, what we need to do is let's use the rectangle tool. Let's start creating the rectangles. But this time I will overlap the windows as well. So now let's triple click on the face to select all the faces and edges. Right click and click on make group. Enter the group. This way I can add the rectangles inside the group. And I also press J to toggle visibility and see how many walls I've added. This helps me work faster. Let's do the same for the third floor as well. So this time I'll have to press escape because I would like to create a separate group for the third floor. So again, just draw one rectangle or two rectangles. Select these faces and edges, make it a group and then enter the group and make the rest of the rectangles. Right, so we've done creating the rectangles. Now we'll use the eraser tool and start deleting these lines in between. What I'll also do is I will actually give the external wall as a separate entity and the internal walls as a separate entity. So let's retain these lines in between. All right. Because flex tools which we're using works better when there are not too many intersections with the walls. Finally, we'll need to delete these faces inside. So let's just select the face and click on delete button on your keyboard. All right. So now we have the external wall and we have the internal walls. Let's delete this edge here. Now let's select double click on the external wall, make it a group, enter the group and give a height of about nine feet, six inches. Similarly, the internal walls just double click to make sure everything is selected. Hold control on your keyboard and double click here. Make this a group, enter the group and give a height of about nine feet, six inches. Let's enter the external walls and make sure all these lines are not shown. So let's use the eraser tool and just delete those lines. All right, so now we have a clean external wall.
It's also a good idea to make sure that always the white face is facing the camera. Make sure these reverse faces are not facing the camera because that will hamper the modeling process and also the rendering process. So press Ctrl Z to undo. Let's do the same for these walls here. And finally, let's delete the faces inside. And all these lines here as well. All right, so you're done creating the walls. Now let's create the slabs. So use the rectangle tool. Click once. Snap to the blue axis so that doesn't snap to any other point. And only on the right plane. Make our rectangle. Make this a group. Give a thickness of about 6 inches. Now in this plan we don't have an extrusion so I'm just going to make a rectangle like that and push this out. Alright finally we need to assign these walls and slabs to a tag so let's select all of these and let's select the right tag in this case is third floor use the tag tool and assign it. Alright so the third floor has been assigned now let's assign the second floor Select the second floor and use the tag tool and assign the second floor. And finally, we have the first floor as well. So let's select all the entities in the first floor. Use the first floor tag. Use the tag tool and assign the first floor as well. Alright, so we've assigned all the elements. So now what I will do is I will select the wall and the slabs and I will move it up by 10 feet. So let's move it from the top of the slab. So this is the top of the slab and bottom of the slab. So let's move it from top of the slab. Move it up by 10 feet. Make sure to snap it to the blue axis as well. So this is moved to 10 feet and this will be moved to 20 feet. All right. And then finally, move this to the edge of that plan there. So I'm going to click on this point, snap it to the red axis and move it here. Select this. So now we can stack our walls and slabs on top of each other. So before that, I will also make sure these plans here are part of these walls. So I will select the CAD plan, right click and click on Explode. So now these are separate entities. So now I'll select all of these you can group it. So press G to make it a group and then move it up by 10 feet. So I'm just going to move it up by 10 feet and then move it to the corner here. Make sure you snap it to the right axis as well. In this case, let's select all of these, make it a group, move it from the top of the slab, which is this point, and move it up by 20 feet. Let's enter and select the corner here and make sure to snap it to the red axis and move it to this point here. Alright, so I think we've stacked it correctly as well. And finally, to finish it off, you can also make a rectangle right on top of the slab. Make this a group and give a thickness of about 6 inches. So now if I go to my plan view, you can see that we made the shell of the building. Let's go to the front view. Let's check the height of the building. So it's about 30 feet, which is right. So generally from the top of the slab, which is this point, to the next top of the slab should be about 10 feet, which is the ideal height for distances from slab top to slab top. And finally, if you notice that this point is not sitting correctly, so I will select these two groups, use this end point, make sure to snap it to the green axis this time or hold shift and just move it in. So now it's sitting correctly. Let's move the slab in as well. All right, great. So in the next video, we'll add our scenes to sort of model faster using scenes. It always helps 
to stay organized using scenes and tags in SketchUp. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, before we proceed with further modeling, I will set up the scenes. So we already have the plan view set up, but I would need to update it a bit. I'll just sort of zoom out and zoom in so that the plan is sitting right in the center of the scene. So we'll start off with the site plan. So this is sort of a site plan. So right click and update the plan view and I'll also change the name of the scene. So you can change it here. Just go to scenes, call this site plan. And then I will zoom in a bit more. And this time I'll start off with the plan views. So let's go to tags and switch off the third floor and the second floor. Now this can be the slab here can be assigned to the third floor. So select the slab and move it to third floor or let's move it to roof as well. So let's create a tag called A dash roof and move this to A dash roof and switch it off. So now we can see our basement. So let's add it to our scene. So click on plus button here and call this the first floor. All right, so now let me just zoom in a bit more because that is zoomed out so you can see the entire flow properly and then right click on first floor and click on update. Now I'll right click on first floor and click on add. And then let's call the second floor. And this time I'll go to tags. Make sure to switch on second floor and switch off first floor. And make sure to update second floor as well. And this time I will need to pan it down a bit. So I'm holding shift and the middle mouse button to pan it down a bit. So this looks ideal. Right click on second floor and click on update. Then right click on second floor, click on add. Again, rename this. You can also rename from here if you like. So right click rename, call this third floor. So this time let's go to tags, switch off second floor and switch on third floor make sure to update the scene as well so now we have second floor third floor first floor as well now i would like to have all these floors with the same view so what i will do is i'll delete the first floor and then i'll add a new scene from the second floor and rename this so let's rename this call this first floor and again, we need to hide the tags. So just show the first floor and click on update. And you can also move these tags or the scenes, the hierarchy of these scenes. So let's go to scenes here. So let's just go to first floor. And you'll get these options here to move the scenes up and down. So let's move it up and we are done. So first floor, second floor, third floor and the site plan. And what you can also do is just go to the front view. So all two. So this is the front view. Zoom in a bit. Right click on third floor and click on add. And let's just call this the front view. You can also add a prefix. So elevation front. So this is a front view. And we can also add a perspective view. So I'm just going to Orbit to the side, press Alt W. This looks good. Zoom in a bit and add the perspective view as well. So, scene six, call this view one. And we are done. So, we have the different scenes in place site plan, first floor, second floor, third floor, elevation front, and the perspective view. We will add more views as in when we progress through the model. But this should suffice for us to start modeling and add the windows and a whole lot more. Helps to stay organized and also helps in modeling faster by using scenes and tags in SketchUp. So I hope you found this video useful and we'll get into more interesting things in the coming few videos. See you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we'll start adding the doors and windows for our scene. So I'll show you the traditional way of adding doors and windows. And I'll show you the more faster way, which is by using this awesome plugin called Flex Tools. All right, so start off, you can see that we have our opening here. So what you can do first is let's add our door for this opening. 
So there are two ways. One is to add the door from the 3D barrels, or you can also model the door here. So to model the door, and if you're short on time, it's a fairly simple process. The first step what you need to do is draw the size of the frame of the door. So in this case, it would be about seven feet by six feet with three feet shutters. So let's draw the rectangle. So click once, snap it to the green axis and make sure that the dimension here is six feet by seven feet. So you need to just type in comma seven feet and tap enter. So we made our shutter there, which is the right size, six feet by seven feet, the frame that is. So now let's double click on that frame, make it a group, enter the frame and then offset it using the offset tool by say two inches. Now we can delete the face inside and we can project this out. So use the push pull tool and project it out by three inches. Now I will move this frame inside by say one inch and I'll also enter the group. Select this face. You can press J to toggle visibility to see your competent better. So let's select this bottom face, use the push pull tool and push this down. So now what I finally do is delete that face. So you can use the eraser tool to delete or my preferred way is to make it a group. So double click to select the faces and the boundary edges. Press G to make it a group and click on delete. All right, so now we've made the frame. It's also a good idea to see how this group entity looks by opening the outliner here. So you can see this is our group. Now, if you enter the group, select all these faces and edges and press G again, it'll make a nested group. You can also rename these nested groups. For example, you just need to click once on the outliner, click again. And then you can call this frame. You can also click on the main group, click again, call this door double swing. All right, so we made the frame. Now let's make the shutters. So again, use the rectangle tool, click on the midpoint, snap it to the green axis, use the left arrow key to snap it, and then click to the midpoint to make your shutter. Now let's make this a group, enter the group and give a thickness of about one inch or 1.5 inches. And then of course you can rename this as well. So call this shutter. You can also copy it to the other side. And we've created a simple door. It's also a good idea to give some gap in between. So I will enter this group, select the face there or you can use the push pull tool as well and push it in by say 2 mm so tap in 2 mm and tap enter let's do the same here as well use the push pull tool type 2 mm and tap enter so we made our simple door finally what we need to do is just enter this group here the wall group you can use the tape measure tool Click on the edge of the line using the tape measure tool, draw your reference lines and then click on this endpoint to draw that reference. And then of course you will need to draw the line to divide that face. So click once, click twice to divide that face and finally use the push pull tool to push it out like that. I will also need to delete these extra lines here. And that's how you create a simple door. Finally to finish it off, you can also model the handles so we have the frame the shutter and the door so now to model the shutter what i'll do is i'll draw some reference lines so let's draw it from the bottom make sure to snap it to the blue axis so the handle can be given at about three feet from the floor so tap in three feet and tap enter and from this point it should be about two inches all right and then let's just draw a circle so I'm just going to draw a circle from this intersection here. So you can see this reference line was not drawn in the right plane. So press undo. Let's do that again. It's also a good idea to make sure that the handle is inside the shutter. So that works better. And let's make this a group. 
So I'll call this shutter board and now it's much more easier to draw our reference lines. So I'm going to draw from this point, three feet, two inches from here. Make sure to snap it. So from here, two inches. All right, so now it's sitting in correctly. So now let's draw a circle. So circle can be about say 10 mm. So almost one inch in there. And then what I'll do is I'll draw a line in the center, snap it to the green axis and give about one inch and move it out and give about 2.5 inches. All right, so now we can use the follow me tool. So let's select the path first. So we need to select these two lines, go to tools, follow me and click on the shape to create a simple handle. We can also extend this out a bit more. So another one inch, select the handle and press G to make it a handle group and also rename this here if you want to stay organized. So we have one handle here. And we'll need to copy this to the other side. So I press Ctrl V, paste it here, move it to the corner, and then mirror it by minus one. All right, so we've created our door with the handles as well. A very simple door. You guys can go crazy and create whatever you like, but that's how you create the door in SketchUp. And if you see a lot of guidelines in the project, just go to edit, click on delete guides to delete any of your guidelines. In the next video, I'll show you how to add the door, which is faster. And then we will show you how to use the flex tools as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you the faster way of adding our doors and windows, which is by using the 3D arrows models. So to start off, I'm going to delete this door that I just modeled. All right, and let's go to Windows, 3D Arrows, and let's search for door. Now in 3D Arrows, we have four main categories. So we have products, models, collections, and catalogs. Products are models which are designed and modeled by companies. For example, if I go to products here, you can see the ones with the tick symbol. The Panda Kitchen and Bath, Arkeyup.com. All these models are modeled by verified companies from SketchUp. Or verified companies that are verified by SketchUp. Next is models. Now these are models which are modeled by you and me. So you can actually upload your models. You just need to click on this upload model button here. And then you'll get that option to upload your models into the 3D arrows. So there are various models that you can download and test in your scene. Next is collections. Now these are collections of various models by users. Now these are collections of doors, which you can check out. So if you open one collection, you can see there are various doors and these are again collected by certain users. Catalogs is similar to collections, but this time it is collected by companies. So all these doors, for example, we also have the flex tool doors. And these components you can download from the website and then bring it into SketchUp as well. So all these are modeled by verified companies. So to start off, let's download a simple model. So let's go to models here. And let's search for double door because this is a double door. So maybe let's search for double door. So you can see this is a cool door. So just click on download and click on yes. So now it's start downloading and then you can bring it into SketchUp. So you just need to place it in place and then you'll have to rotate it manually. So I'm just going to rotate it by 90 and move it in place. And I will also need to scale it. So let me select the door, press S to scale. And then you will get these grip points here. So let's use the midpoint, scale it to this edge and use the top to scale it to that edge there. All right, so now we placed our door, which looks decent. Now the problem with these regular models is that it's not dynamic in nature. Now, for example, if I select this door and scale it this way, you can see that it sort of didn't scale uniformly and proportionally. 
So in that case, you would need to start using something called dynamic components. So I'm going to delete this door, press F3. Let's go back to Windows, 3D arrows. And this time, I'm going to go to advanced here and make sure to switch on dynamic components. So these are dynamic component doors. So let's download one of these models and I'll show you how it works. So let's click on this, download and click on yes. And let's place it in place. All right, let me hide the doors. Now let's select this door, use the scale tool. At this time when you notice, the scale has only four grips uh, and doesn't have the corner grips. So what happens is when I scale this, you can notice that it maintains the frame width. Doesn't matter how wide or how narrow the door is, it will always maintain that frame width even when you go up and down as well. And that's because when you right click on the component, go to dynamic components, click on component options. You can see it comes in with various parameters. So this is inbuilt and created by the user. It's a fairly simple process to create dynamic components and I will create a specific video later on in the course. Another component that I would like to show you guys is, let's go to Windows, 3D arrows, advanced again and this time I'll switch off dynamic components and I'll switch on live components. Let's just search for door this time because live components are modeled by SketchUp Labs and there are very limited models. So you can use this French door. So let's download this and click on yes. All right, place it in place. Now this time when you click on the scale tool, it won't be able to scale the component. Instead, you will need to select the component, right click and click on configure live component. So this will connect to the internet. Now let's see the size. It is about six feet by seven feet. And we will need to give the right size here. So six feet is six into 12, which is about 72 inches. And height is about 84 inches. And then we can simply move it in place. And you can notice that it comes in perfectly. Another useful feature of dynamic components is that if I go to my component options, so let's go to configure live component. You can change the color of the material. You can change the hardware style if you like. For example, you can keep it simple, short and so on. You can also reduce the size of the frame here. Now you need to have an active internet connection to work with live components in SketchUp. The same goes for Windows as well. Just make your opening. So for example, if I make an opening here, it's also a good idea when you make your openings to use the tape measure tool. So for example, if there was a window here, then I would draw reference lines to that point. Let's say this is about five feet. And then we have the sill is going to be about two feet and then of course the lintel which is about seven feet so now i just need to draw my rectangle on top of that reference line and then make the opening so always get in the habit of using your tape measure tool to draw the reference lines and then create the openings same goes for the other flows as well so in case if there was an opening here i would do the same so just letting you guys know how to add the windows into the openings so now once you've created the opening, just go to Windows, 3D arrows, search for window this time. And you can either use a live component. For live components, you need to go to models. So these are the various live components. Or you can also use a dynamic component. So these are the various dynamic components. So let's maybe download this. Place it in place. Let's move it up a bit and then we can, of course, scale it. Use a scale tool. If you don't see the scale, it means that the user has not integrated the scale tool into this component. So in this case, you will need to right click dynamic components, go to component options. And the width in this case is 60 by, let's snap it, it should be 
60 by 60. Yep, 12 is a 60 by 60. So let's change that here. The height would be 60 inches as well. Now there are various casings here, which you can either remove or you can let it be. So that's how simple it is to add windows. And then of course it's got some other options here. For example, you can add a grill or you can just remove the grill. Let's remove the grills from the exterior and interior. Click on yes or apply. So that removes the grill as well. All right. So we've added the door and the window for the basement. In the next video, we will start adding the doors and windows, but this time we will use the flex tools and add it to our other floors. Now, if you don't have flex tools, you can go ahead and use the methods that I've taught you so far to add the doors and windows into the model. Or if you have flex tools, stick around and I will show you the faster way of adding doors and windows. I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add flex tools into SketchUp. Before that, I will show you an extra bonus tip with live components. Now, if you double click on this live component, it will connect to the configure live component. And if you'd like to open the door at the bottom, we have an option called open angles. If you increase this, it will start opening the door. So you can keep set it at 90 or you can set it more than that as well. So a quick tip for you guys. All right. So now what I'll do is I'll switch on the second floor. So let's switch on the second floor. And I'll hide the first floor. Or we can also go to the second floor scene. So this is our second floor scene. Let's press Y to activate the X-ray mode. And you can see the windows that we have in our scene. Now for flex tools to work, you will need to make sure that this external wall is a component. So I'm going to select this group, right click and click on make component. And I'm going to call this second floor wall. Click on create. So that's the main step that you need to follow before you add your flex tool components into the scene. So once you've created a component, you can start adding the doors and windows. So let's start off by adding our windows here. So you can place a double hung window, a sliding window. There's also doors, a balcony door and window, bifold door and window. So let's start off by placing this double hung window. So click on double hung. And then simply click to place your window. So basically what happens is it will automatically create the opening. Now what I'll do is I will move it. So I'm going to use the move tool and click once and move it along the red axis. So, and you can see that it is dynamic in nature, which means it will move the opening along with it as well. So now let's press Y to activate the X-ray mode. And then I'm going to scale it to this edge and this edge. So press S to scale this window and click once, scale it to this edge. Click the second point and scale it to this edge. What it will also do is scale the bottom. So we will need to figure out the lintel and the sill heights. So the sill height can be about one foot from the floor. And the lintel can be about seven foot or seven feet from the floor. This is the lintel and this is the sill. So now I'll select the window. Press S to scale and scale this to the top. And scale this point to this sill height here. Now let's right click on the component, go to dynamic components and click on component options. So this is dynamic and that's where I've gone to the dynamic component options. You can also access the component options from the flex tools here. Just click on component options and it will show up directly. Now let's switch off the cilia, which is this board here, sort of projecting out. So if you scroll to the bottom, you will find sill. So let's switch this off, click on apply. And we have a clean window in place. There are also other parameters that you can play around with. For example, the frame thickness. And then we have also the sash, which is this 2.5 inches. And a whole lot more. I won't be playing around a lot with these options because this is, again, just the initial stage 
with your client where you're showing them a simple three model. So you don't have to go into the specifics now, but later on we can change it as well. All right, so I've copied one window. Now I press Y to activate the X-ray mode. Use the move and copy tool and I'll copy it to this point here. Let's make sure it's copied correctly. Snap it to the red axis. Copy it there. You can see automatically clears the opening. After you created one component, let's go to the tags here. So you can see it doesn't belong to any tag. So I'm going to select these two windows and move it to the second floor tag. Because that is our active tag. So now let's copy this. I'm just going to move it here, which is another point. And then finally, we have our window here. So you can see how useful the X ray mode also comes into picture. All right, so we placed our windows this side. Now let's place some windows here. So this time we have a large window. So we can use multiple windows. You can use the sliding window, or you can also use the bifold door and window, whatever you like. There's also the casement window that you can use. Let's go with the sliding window. So click on that. And let's place it on the wall first. Press Y to deactivate the X-ray mode. Use the scale tool. Click on the bottom and scale it to that edge. Let's draw the reference lines using the tape measure tool. So 7 feet. And then let's scale it to this edge. And then let's scale it to the endpoints. Alright, great. So I've scaled the window. So now I need to add these mullions in between because we can't have such a large shutter. So again, let's go to the component options. And when you scroll to the bottom, you'll find an option called sash. So let's increase this to 5. Click on apply. And click on yes. So sometimes it takes longer. So you just need to click on yes in case a prompt shows up. Alright, so we've added our sliding window as well. Again, this is parametric in nature. Let's undo that. Let's see if we can add anything else. Yeah, we have another window there. So I'm just going to copy this from this point to this point here. We've created two awesome windows. And generally, in Flex tools, you can't really copy from one wall to another so easily. For example, if I try to copy this, sometimes it doesn't work. So let's select this window and copy it here. Okay, this time it did work, but sometimes it doesn't work. So in that case, you will need to add the window again from scratch. So let's, since I've copied it here, let's move this here and let's copy this here as well. So that's how easy it is to add doors and windows using the flex tools. Finally, I have to show you how to add a door as well. So let's do that. Let's click on the door component. And let's place one here. You just need to sort of hover on the edge for a bit till it gets added correctly on the right plane. All right, so now I press Y. Let's move it in place. And let's scale this to this edge. Also. I made a mistake because if I select this face, you can see I've placed the door inside the face, which is not ideal because the flex tools doesn't work properly in that case. So I'm just going to undo. I'm going to escape. I'm going to select all my internal doors. These internal doors here as well. Right click and click on make component. And I'll call this first floor internal walls. So always make sure you add your doors on components and not on groups and not inside the group or the component as well. So let's click on door and place it now. All right. So now it should work more efficiently even in the future as well. So now let's scale this to this edge. And let's scale this to this edge here.
Finally, you can also open the door by using the interact with dynamic component option. So click on this button. And if you click on the shutter, it will open. So in this case, it has opened on the other side. So you can click on flip to flip the door. All right, great. Now I'll share a few tips for you guys before I go ahead and finish the model. Now these doors and components don't work on faces which have extra lines or which are projected like this. For example, if I place a door here, you can see that it doesn't work properly. So make sure you always that there are no stray lines in the model. So if I move this face back and click on delete, we have a clean face there. Another example is if I make a line here. And now if I place a door on this edge, so let's place a door here. You can notice that it doesn't create that opening. And that's because we have a straight line here. So if I delete the straight line, it still doesn't work. So let's undo that. Delete the straight line first and then place the door. So now it creates the opening. So make sure you have a clean geometry. If you want to see whether your geometry is clean, you can actually use a plugin called solid inspector just go to extensions extension arrows and search for solid inspector and go ahead and download solid inspector 2. so once you download it you can open this plugin let's select the walls first and click on solid inspector and you can notice right now there are no errors so it helps you make sure you have clean geometry in sketchup all right so finally what i'll do is i will delete all these edges here Because with these stray edges, sometimes flex tools geometry doesn't work properly. All right. So now if I move my windows, they all work fine. And we are ready to use flex tools. So few tips to recap is to always use components and make sure that you add your doors and windows outside the component group and not inside it, not inside this. Always make sure you add it outside. And also make sure there are no stray edges because flex tools don't work properly. It's also a good idea to model your external wall separately and your internal walls separately. Now in the next video, I'll do a time lapse of completing this model with the flex tool components. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.
Hey guys, welcome back. So we've done modeling the shell, which contains of the walls, slabs, doors, and windows, and also the internal walls and doors. Now in this video, I'll show you how to organize the model better. So on the right, we have the outline of window. So basically this indicates the various groups and the components in your scene. So you can see this is the third floor group under which we have the various walls and windows. Similarly here on top as well. So what you can do is we can sort of explode these because we don't need to have too many nested groups. This will sometimes break the flex tools plugin as well. So sometimes the windows do not work. We have too many nested groups and components. So first thing what I will do is I will enter the group and I'll show you the various groups within the main group. So we have the main walls, doors and windows, and then we have the CAD layer, and then we have the slab. So let's rename this. So you just need to click on the group, click again, and then you can rename this. So I'll call this third floor CAD. And then this would be third floor slab. And then this is the doors and windows. So let's call this DF dash doors, windows, and walls. So if I hide this, that will hide all the doors and windows as well. So now I can select the main group, right click and click on explode. So this way it's more easier to organize it in the outliner. And it's easier because if I enter once, I would select the walls and the windows and I can move it easily as well, rather than having to keep clicking to open each of the nested groups. So let's do the same here as well. Let's rename this. So this is our second floor. Walls, doors, windows. And then we have the CAD. And finally, the slab. And let's go to the main group. I click and click on export. So we're just exploring the main group. Then we have a slab on top. So let's rename this, call this roof slab. 
And let's see what else we have. We have another layer here, which is the first floor CAD. And then we have some windows and French doors, which came in from 3D Barrows. So we can add this to the first floor. So call this first floor window and first floor door. All right, so this way it's much more easier to edit stuff as we are organizing the outliner as well. So you can hide certain slabs, doors and windows and work along with your tags as well. Since we are organizing the model, let's organize the tags here since we have added some tags from flex tools. So let's select all the flex tools. Just click once, hold shift and click on the last tag here and click on add tag folder. I'll call this flex tool tags. And let's move these tags to our flex tool tags as well. It's a good idea not to delete these tags because these components here belong to certain flex tool tags. All right, great. Let's move this tag here as well. And I'll select these tags here, add it to a folder and call this house tags. So we can hide the entire house if required as well. The site tag, let it be separate. And let's actually make the site as a group as well. So let's hide the other tags. Select all of this, right click and make group. All right, great. So we've pretty much organized the model now with our tags, scenes and outliner. So try to rename as many groups as possible. So you just made the site group. So we'll call this site. And there's one last group, which belongs to the first floor walls. Let's see if flex tools is still working properly after adding all those tags. It is. So we don't have any problems as well. Great. So we can edit the windows later on as well. For example, these windows here would like to be in the same height as this window. So I'll just enter this component Use the scale tool, press Y, and scale it to the bottom. So everything is parametric in nature and working great. So let's select this window and scale this. And we are good to go. All right, so in the next video, we'll add our custom openings for our elevator doors and also for the model house by adding stairs and more. So see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to create some custom openings for our model so that you can use any sort of shape and create wall openings as well. Before that, you can see that we, our components are still parametric. So if I move it in place, everything works fine. So let's undo that. And let's start off with the custom opening. So for the custom opening, we will need to use something called the wall cutter options from your flex tools toolbar. So just click on that, activate it and keep it on the side. And start off, let's draw a rectangle. So press R to activate the rectangle to click once. And the custom opening that we're going to create is going to be our lift door. So in this case, it's going to be about four feet, comma, seven feet and tap enter. Let's double click on the face, right click and make component and call this elevator door. Click on create. Next is to start placing it on the walls here. So let's figure out where our lift room is. Go to my house tags here and switch out the third floor and second floor and the roof as well. If you want to save time, you can also just click on the first floor here and automatically hide those tags. If you'd also like to hide the CAD plan, then you can just go to your outliner here. And since we've created different names for these tags, it's easier to make out what it is. So let's switch off FF CAD and then we can update the first floor plan. So now if I go to second floor and click on first floor, the CAD plan also hides. So once you're on first floor, you can just orbit. There's all W to go back to perspective mode. All right, so to place our elevator door, we of course need the covered wall. So I'm just going to enter this group, push this to the edge and make sure we don't have any stray edges as well. So I'm going to delete those extra lines all around this wall. 
press escape. Now the first step to place your flex tool components to check whether this group is a component. So right click on the group. It's still a group so click on make component. Let's use the default name and click on create. So now it's a component. Alright so now we can place this custom opening on the wall. So select the rectangle and click on convert to wall cutter. That will make it a custom opening and then simply place it on the wall. So once you place it, if you orbit to the other side, you can see that it creates that opening there. Now let's use the line tool, click once and click here. This is sort of like a reference line and I will move this elevator door right to the center of that line. All right, great. Now let's delete that reference line, so we, we don't need that. And now of course we need to model our elevator door. So let's enter the component. Let's use the offset tool. And offset the face by say one inch. Press J to toggle visibility. Now I'll select this face, delete it, and I will push this face in. So let's push it in by four inches and also move it down. And finally, delete this bottom face. So we have our frame in place. Now we can select this frame, right click and click on make group. Also, if you notice on the right, we are creating groups here. So we can rename this, call this elevator frame let's go back to elevator door all right so we have our elevator frame now let's make our elevator shutter as well so draw a shutter a rectangle from the center snap it to the blue axis just need to use your arrow keys and let's snap it to the center there let's see if we find the center all right so we found the midpoint i'm going to make this a group and i'll just scale it to the bottom there so you can see there are two nested groups now. Now let's enter this group and give a thickness, say about 1.5 inches. That should work well. You can also go ahead and rename your groups here. So elevator, shutter. Now I'm just going to copy this to the other side and we are done creating our elevator door. You can also give a gap between the elevator doors so you can just enter this group i'm going to push this in by say 1 mm enter the other group and push this in by 1 mm all right so we've placed our elevator door which looks nice nice and cool so now let's place it on the other floors so i'm going to press ctrl c to copy this elevator door and you, it's also a good idea to sort of move this elevator door to the right tag so i'm going to move this to a dash first floor now let's go to the second floor all right so we are on second floor now before you place your door make sure you're placing it in a component i'm just going to right click on the selection so you can see it's a group and if i enter the group it's actually nested the external wall is nested into this group so you can see this is our component all right so i'll have to place it on my internal component here so it's fine if you're placing it inside a nested group but make sure you always place it on a component and not a group so i'm going to press ctrl v and then just place it in place here if you're not able to place it on the bottom there you can also place it on the wall so that will create the opening and then you can just move it in place so i'm just going to move to the midpoint there and move it to the bottom so that would create the opening there. Finally, after placing it, just change the tag. So in this case, it'll be the second floor. So let's do the same for the third floor. So let's go to the third floor. Press escape to go out from the other group. Again, this is the same problem. So you can see the components are nested within this main group. So it is under this group here, doors, windows, walls. So I'm going to enter this group. And now we are in the right walls you can also explore this main group and the reason why i've grouped all of them together is because our outline also is organized properly all right so let's see if our internal component or internal walls is a component is and again just press ctrl v place it on the wall and move it to the bottom So again, we've placed our custom wall elevator door on the wall. 
on all the flows. So let's go to view one. And if you notice, we have our elevators in place as well. So that's to use custom openings. You can create any sort of custom opening that you like and you can add it on your wall. In the next video, we'll add our stairs and then we will do some facade treatment as well. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to create the stairs for our model here. So first step is to go to the right scene. So in this case, I'm going to go to the second floor and we're going to place our stairs here. So the height of this house from slab to slab is about 10 feet. Now, if it is 10 feet, then you will need about 20 risers to create your stairs. So what I will do is I will hide the walls. So let me just hide the walls here. Can hide it from here. Yeah, so I'm hiding it from the outliner. And I will create a stair using the traditional way. So let's use the rectangle tool. Click once, click the second time. So this is our face. Select the face, right click and make group or make component. In this case, it's better to make it a component because we will copy it as an array. So I'm going to make this a component and call this stair flight. Typical. Now what I will do is enter the component and I will give a thickness and I'll give it about six inches. Now I'll give you some basics about stairs. So this is from here to this point here is the thread. So you can see this is about one foot, which is ideal for placing your feet on the flight and it's great for residences. So one foot is ideal. And the height should ideally for residences be about six inches. Now, if it's a commercial building, you can go about seven inches or even sometimes eight inches, but six inches is comfortable for a person to climb. So this is our typical stair. We have our thread and we have our riser. Now let's copy this all the way to the top. So for that, it's a very simple process. Just press M, tap control on your keyboard. So this will go into copy mode. Click on the point here and click here to create your step. Now, before I create the other steps, what I will do is I'll group these two steps together. So select these two groups or components and press G to make it a group. So we have our main group. Let's call this steps. And then we have our two components there. So now let's enter this group, select this component. Again, use the move tool, tap control to make a copy, click from this point to this point. And this time I will type X 10 and tap enter. So that's not enough. We need about 20 steps since we already created one step. I will type X 19 and tap enter. And that should go to the other floor. So now let's go to our view one here. Let's press Y to activate X-ray mode. So we have one step extra, as you can see. We've made about 21 steps, so we can delete that last step there. So I'm just going to hide the last floor. I'm using the X-ray mode this time, and I'm deleting the last step. So let's go back to first floor. The second floor, that is. And you can see that we created our steps. So generally, the last step is also the slab, the finished slab. So we can actually delete this last step here as well because we already have a slab on top. So in general, they make about 19 steps. So this is the traditional way to make a step. I'm going to hide this wall again. So let's see where our wall is. And we have our simple step in place. You can also make this cantilevered since this is a component. I will just enter the group or component and then can push it up. And you can see that we've created some cantilevered steps as well. So this is the traditional way. You can then, of course, add the slab below the steps and more. But we're not going to go in depth about that because we have a simpler way to create steps. And that is by using the step stairs tool in the flex tools toolbar. So I'm going to delete this stair and I'm going to click on stairs here. And you can see that the steps goes from here all the way to the top. So what I will do is I will place it 
here and then I will scale it. So I'm going to scale it to minus one. So basically I'm mirroring the stair. And then I would also like to make sure the stair creates an opening on the slab. So in that case, you can go back to your wall cutter options and convert the stair to a wall cutter. So now if I place it, it will create a opening on that slab. So we will need to use component. So let's convert that slab to a component as well. All right, so you can see we've created that opening. So again, we'll have to mirror it because we converted that to a wall cutter. So let's mirror it to minus one. And let's scale it to the edges. So I'm going to scale this to this edge here. Just make sure you're snapping to the right point. All right. And now what I'll do is I will actually switch on the first floor as well. So let's go to our tags here and let's switch on the first floor. And I will stretch this from this point here. So it will actually start from here. Give it a bit each time you stretch the stair tool. And then I will use the vertical stretch. So I'm going to use this bottom point here and just stretch it to the bottom of the floor. So now it should automatically increase the number of steps and risers in the model. So you can see it increases the number of steps. Now let's move this in place because it has to go to the end of that flight. So I'm just going to move it to this point here. So it creates that opening as well. And now we need to adjust some of the settings here. So let's right click on the step, go to dynamic components and click on component options. So these are the various parameters that our developer has made for the plugin. By the way, the developer of Flex Tools is Yoni. He's a great guy from Israel and he's created this awesome plugin. Now you can give the max riser height here. So it's set about 5.9 inches. I'm going to change this to 6 inches and click on apply. So you can see when I increase the riser height, it also reduced the number of steps from 21 to 20, which is ideal for the space. Let's check if we can decrease the thread as well. So you can see the current thread is about 12 inches. So we can change this. So maybe let's keep it only about 12 inches and press tab and click on apply. So now it should match the CAD plan as well. So the CAD plan is made by keeping 12 inches as thread length and 6 inches as riser depth in mind. So now you can see that it sits in perfectly. By the way, this part here is something called nosing. So generally the stair has a concrete slab which is cast in place. And then we can add some panels like this with a nosing projection as well. You can also adjust the nosing here. So if I scroll to the bottom, you can see the nosing. You can reduce or increase the nosing thickness. So I'm going to leave it as is because it's perfect. And the stringer is the distance between from the edge of the nosing to the slab edge here. So you can reduce the depth of the stringer here as well. Now a last bit of information that I would like to share is generally when you have flow to flow steps, we have a landing in between. Now in this project, the client did not request for a landing and was okay for giving straight flight of steps. But it is more comfortable if we have a landing in for every 11 risers on a flight of stairs. So if you want to add a landing, it's a very simple process. You just need to use this interact with dynamic components option. And let's count the number of steps. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this step should be have the landing. So let's click on that step. And boom, it's created that landing on the flight of stairs. So that's how easy it is. So I'm just going to undo. You just need to use this interact button and click on the step and it will automatically create that landing, which is going to be the size of your width of the steps. All right. So that was a brief into the flex tool stairs, which is an awesome tool to add stairs. You can do a whole lot more with the flex tool stairs. So you can check out the documentation 
by flex tools on their website but this should cover most of it as well all right so we've done creating the stairs for the first floor let's add it quickly to the other floors as well so i'm going to copy this so press m tap control make a copy and let's move it in place so that's one and tap to I x2 and press enter and let's move it to the right tag as well so this would go to our first floor this would go to our second floor and this would go to our third floor so now we can also check it in the plan view so we have our first floor here second floor here and third floor as well all right great we created our steps which looks great and next video we can do some facade treatment and complete this model so i'll see you guys next video cheers hey guys welcome back in this video we're going to do some facade treatment and make this simple box building look much more better all right so the first step what i'm going to do is add some projections because that would definitely enhance this building so you can see we already have a balcony which is projected to about seven feet or eight feet and we can do the same for the roof slab as well so let's enter the roof slab and give a projection of about eight feet or you can also just click on that face there and make sure it snaps to the bottom there so it's equal in nature all right so it's sort of getting better now what i'll also do is hide these cad layers here because it comes in the view which is also a little bit distracting so i'm going to hide the second floor cad layer and the third floor cad layer and what i'll also do is i'll add a view and i'll call this edit so each time i want to edit the view i would just come to edit and those layers would be hidden as well all right so i projected these two slabs now i'm sort of going for a u-shape sort of a slab and what i'll also do is maybe just push this out a bit to the bottom of the top slab there all right that looks good all right so we have our two big slabs now the problem is if you're going to give such a big cantilever which is about seven feet we need a deeper beam to support this slab so what we can do is just enter this group and we'll push this down by six inches so we have a one foot slab so this would work much more better for the structure as well let's do the same for the roof so I'm going to push this up by one foot. By the way, in this project, we need to make sure that the total height of the building to the top of the slab should be about 35 feet. So let's use the tape measure tool, click on the bottom. And let's see here, it's about 31 feet. So we're short of the four feet, which is fine. Let's check this width because I seem to have made it one foot six inches. So let's bring it back down by six inches. All right. And then I will add like a beam or a wall here as well. To complete the shape so let's select this slab use the rotate tool i'll copy it from here so tap control to make a copy and copy it by 90. oh i forgot to switch on my shortcut so let me switch that on quickly all right so now what i can do is enter this group the problem is this is a component so i will have to make it unique so select this component right click and click on make unique and then I will enter the component and simply close that opening. And I'll also push this down to the bottom of that slab. All right, great. Now what I need to do is just enter this wall group here. So press J to toggle visibility and just push this in a bit. I can also do it for this wall here. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll enter this group and push this out by one foot. One foot or one foot six inches also works well. So let's do the same for all these slabs. So these are all the projections that we made to our building. It's starting to look good. I would also like to project this out a bit so i will project it out by say one foot six inches and that should suffice all right 
Now we can add our wall panels, which is going to be the treatments on this facade. So I'm just going to make some rectangles like this. Make it a group and then project it out by say two inches. So these are the wall claddings. Now this will go from the base of that floor to this top here. And we'll also move it to the edges of these windows. So this is one group. Let's copy it to the other side. Make sure to snap it to the red axis. Enter this group and then move it to the edges there. Use the X-ray mode in case you're not able to snap to the right endpoints. All right, and then I will select these two groups, right click and make group. So we have a main group and under which we have the nested group. So you can call this main group wall treatment. Now let's copy this groups all around the windows, between the windows that is. So we have one here. What I'll also do is I would like to move my windows away from the wall here. So I will enter this wall group. Select the window and just move it out a bit. All right, maybe we'll just move it here to this edge. All right, let's do the same for this window here as well. Now, since this is flex tools, the openings update dynamically as well. And then finally enter this wall treatment group and move it here. And push this in as well. All right, great. Now let's copy this wall treatment. So you can also press J to toggle visibility. Let's select these two wall groups and press J again and copy to the other side. Now you will need to move this in place. So let's move this here. All right, and let's check if this is also sitting in place. So make sure it's always Touching the edges. This one here as well. Now I'd like to actually match the windows at the bottom. So I will select these windows. Use the scale tool and scale it to the edge there. So now this should update the background. All right, so our windows are updated as well. Now we can continue making our changes. So let's copy this here. Again, I will move this closer. Now there's some things to keep in mind when you're using flex tools. For example, if I enter this group and press J, you can see we have the component and the windows. Now, sometimes these flex tool components don't work properly when it's at a junction like this. So, for example, if I move this or decrease the size of this window, you can see that it loses its dynamic capability and the opening doesn't create. So, if I press Y, it's actually hidden inside that wall. So, I'm just going to undo. So, make sure you always have an offset from the edges like this. And this time when you edit the size of the window, it should work properly retaining that opening as well. So sometimes when the windows are at the edges of the walls, for example, this junction, then it wouldn't work properly. So I'm just going to undo, press J and let's move this window closer to this wall here. And let's enter this group, select this window and move it closer to this wall here as well. Finally, let's enter this group and copy it here. All right, we can also give it a color. Let's use the paint bucket tool and you can use any material from here. Let's go to stone. Let's use this Carrera marble. And we've applied that material on the entire group. So this is how you add a facade treatment. Now we need to add some more elements 
But I will do that in the next video where we will create the louvers for our stair opening here. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to add louvers in SketchUp. I will show you the traditional way to create louvers and also we can create it using Flex Tools louvers as well. So the first step, what we need to do is enter this component wall and then make our opening. So I'm just going to make an opening like this and give the opening using the push pull tool. So make that a group and delete that and we have our opening. Then what I'll also do is move this wall to the edge of the stair. So you can see right about there and don't have to move it all the way to the edge. So I will give an offset, say about two and a half feet. And then we'll push this wall to about here. But this wall can go to the edge of that stair. So that's about here. All right. Not at the nosing level, but at the edge of that stair there. All right, great. So we have our opening. And then you can create the lure. It's a very simple lure. So you can just use the rectangle tool. Let's draw the frame first. Make this a group. Give an offset of about 1.5 inches. So this will be the frame. Then I will delete this face inside and I'll push this in as well. Now I'll move this frame inside a bit. So let's insert it by about one inch or whatever it is. And then we can draw our lures. So we can use the arc tool to create the lures. So let's click on two point arc. So click on two point arc, click once, click the second time here and give it to about two inches. And then we can copy this and scale it minus one and then move it in place. Now, if it doesn't create the face, you can just draw a line in between. So what we need to do is hide that frame to see the face. All right. So we have our face and we have our profile. So now we can make this a group and then extend it out. Let's unhide the frame as well and then extend it to about here. So this is one type of lure and you can also rotate it. So I'm going to press Y and snap it to the blue axis and rotate it from the center. Sometimes if you don't get the center, you can also draw a reference line inside. Snap it to the blue axis and then rotate it like this. So you can rotate it by 45 and then move it in place. Copy it from this corner to about here and divide by nine. Or you can also divide by 10 and we've created our lures. Let's divide by 15 maybe. All right. So this is one way to create your vertical fins or lures. It's also a good idea to select all of these and make it a main group. This is why I always make a group before array copying it in SketchUp because I don't have to individually select all of these. So selected all of it and made my lure. So that's how easy it is to create your lures. Then you can also add a window at the back. Now the problem is when you move this lure, you will have to also adjust the windows. And if you'd like to rotate the angle of each lure, then you would need to move, enter the group and rotate each of these lures as well. Or you can also enter the component. So I'll show you another trick. Draw a reference line inside and then rotate it. Oh, the problem is I didn't make this lure a component. So that's why I couldn't rotate all of them together. So make sure next time you make repeating models that you make it a component. All right, so this is the manual way to model your lures. All right, so this is the manual way to model your lures. Let me show you the faster way, which is of course to use flex tools. You can also go to 3D Barrows and download lure dynamic components like I showed you in the doors and windows tutorial for this course. But now we'll focus on flex tools. 
So let's enter our main group. This is our component. And let's add the Lovers Slats component from Flex Tool. So let's click on this and let's add it in place. And let's rotate it. Since we have vertical lures. And then let's scale it to that point there. And scale the top to that point there. Let's tap J to toggle visibility. So again, let's draw a reference line. So this would be about two and a half feet. And then we can scale our lures to this point, which is the edge of the stair. All right, so we scaled to that point. Now we can scale it to our reference line. All right, guys, so finally our fins have been created. So now we need to adjust the settings of these fins. So let's enter this component, select the component and click on component options. So these are the various parameters of this flex tool component. Let's start off by changing the spacing. So I'm going to change this to about eight inches. And then what I will do is I will change the slat width and depth. So basically that is the width and depth here. So for example, now you can see it's about point 157. So if I measure this here, let me measure it correctly. So it's about 3 16th of an inch, which is 0.157. If I measure this, you can see it's about 1.378. So let's change the depth to about 3 inches and the width to about 1 inch. 1 inch by 4 inch fins. And then what I'll also do is I will not rotate it by 45 degrees. So I'll make this 0. And finally, I will change the thickness here, which is the frame thickness, to about 6 inches. All right, so I've changed the wall thickness and now I need to also change the frame width. So right now it's 0.7, so which is fine. So maybe you can just keep it about one inch and the depth, we can change it to about five inches. All right, great. So I made all the required changes and now I'm going to click on apply and wait for it to update. Now, if you have a faster system, it would work faster. Since I'm using a laptop, it's going to take some time. All right, so this time it's updated it faster because we have fewer things to compute in the element. All right, great. So now you can see the spacing between these slats is about seven inches or eight inches center to center. Now, if you'd like to give a larger window at the corners, you can do that as well by decreasing one slat from each of these edges here. So you can see at the bottom of the component options, we have this number of slats. So let's reduce this by one. And when I reduced it by one, you can see now it is more equal in number as well. All right, so now we can copy this element. So let's copy this, Control C. And let's enter the top component. Press Ctrl V to paste it in place. So it creates that opening automatically. And then of course we can move it in place here as well. Finally, what I'll also like to do is just add a wall group here. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here using the move and copy tool. And then push it in place. Let's then copy this group. And push this in place here as well. All right, great. So you created our good looking lures. And then finally, as a bonus, you can just add a rectangle in between these lures. Make this a group and push this out by say half inch. 
and then apply the window material as well. So that is these vertical windows placed in between each of these fins. So it would be about 7 inches by the entire height of the floor. And then of course you can copy this to the top. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you guys in the next video where we will add some wooden cladding on the facade using the profile builder plugin. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to add some wooden panels for these areas here to complete the building. And before that, I've got to add the louvers here. So I will just extend this wall to about here and then enter this component group. Copy this and make sure to paste it on top of this wall here. Make sure you're not entering the component but pasting it from outside. So I'm just going to paste it about here and we've added our doors. I'm not going to add windows here because the actual entrance of the building is from the first floor or the second floor, that is. It gets a little confusing to use. The second floor here because in India generally we consider this as the first floor and this is the ground floor. But for Americans, they generally prefer calling this as the first floor and this is the second floor. I hope in the future, maybe 100 years from now, everyone uses the same ruling while numbering the floors. Alright, enough of that. Now let's start with Profile Builder to create our wooden components. So let's create the basic component first. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool going to click once and this is going to be about one foot six inches comma eight inches so this is our basic wooden tile and i'm going to give an offset of say about half inch and then i'm going to push this up by say half inch so this is our basic wooden tile now i can select all of this right click and click on make component call this wooden tile and press create then of course you can rotate it by 90 and then we can place it on the wall so i'm going to come here and place it here let's also give a color so you can either give a color or you can also go to wood and give any material that you like now you can't see this face here, so let's push this out a bit by half inch. Enter this group and then we'll push this face out by half inch. So now we have a proper component. Let's make sure the back face is also covered. Alright, perfect. So this is a component and now I can copy this. Now make this a group and copy it on top. So I'm just going to copy it like that. So we have one component like that in place. You can also, in case if it is sort of not sitting properly, you can move it down a bit. So I'm just going to move the top one down. Alright, so this would be a cut tile that they will clad on the wall. Then of course, it's a good idea to make these two a group. Or we can select both of these, make these a group. Let's check the outline now, how it looks. So you have two main groups. Now we don't need to have so many nested groups. So right click explode and right click explode. So all these tiles belong to our main group here. And then of course you can copy this. So I'm going to copy it like this. Paste it here. Select these two. Use the move tool and copy it down like this. And tap J to toggle visibility. And type X5, tap enter. And that should fix that. Now if this one is not sitting properly, you can scale this individually. And scale it to that edge there. Alright, so this is the traditional way. Now, for example, 
if you want to wrap your wooden component around a surface so for example around this so in that case what you would need to do i'll just copy this control c control v here move it in place and then i will need to rotate it by 90 and move it in here all right so we wasted two components like that and then you will need to go around the building wrapping and copying and pasting and moving and copying arraying and copying and so on since this is a component if i edit one it would affect all the other ones as well so make sure each panel is a single component so you can see the component here so this is the manual way hey guys welcome back so you did get an introduction to the profile builder by creating this assembly but there's a faster way to create your wall panels and we're going to use the flex tools wall panel tool here so the panels tool from flex tools to add the panels so we're just going to delete all of these we just keep in mind of the size so you can see our size right now it's about one and a half feet by eight inches so let's delete all these panels let's enter the wall panel group so this is our wall panel group and let's click on the panels tool so now press j to toggle visibility so we're going to place some panels here so i'm just going to place the panel like this and then we will need to rotate it so i'm going to rotate it now with the 90 degrees so 90 and we're just going to move it in place now what i'll do is i'll use the scale tool and i'll just select any scale grip and scale it to this edge here so now watch what happens so it automatically divides that area into different panels all right, great. So now let's adjust some of these settings because we want it to look like our previous panel. So let's go to our component options here. So you can see these are the various parameters of this panel. So now let's adjust some of these parameters here. So let's make sure our back panel is visible. It is. And let's give a thickness to our back panel as well. So by the way, this is our back panel. So let's give about one inch thick panel. So you can see that's given the one inch thick panel now one inch seems a little too much so we can reduce it of course so we can make it one and a half inch and click on apply all right great one slash two doesn't work in the parameter settings so type in with decimals all right that looks good i'm just going to move it in place now we need to adjust each of these panels so let's check the panels here so you can see there's two panels so the first panel is about 31 inches so let's change this to one foot six inches and the spacing we're going to give about half inch so 0 0.5 let's go to the second panel now this panel would be about eight inches it's the same panel but the breadth and this is the width this is going to be 8 inches and spacing again would be about 0.5 inches. So now let's click on apply. Alright, great. So now it's created the panel, but it's created in the wrong direction. So in that case, I will need to change it. So in that case, I can just rotate the panel. So I'm just going to rotate by 90s. And then I'm just going to scale it in place. So I'm going to scale it here. All right. And then we need to scale it this way as well. All right. Great. So now we can just rotate this. I'm just going to rotate it from here and rotate it by 90. Make a copy also. 
and move it in place. I'm just going to move it in place. By the way, these are all components, so you can just go to your wooden material lower and apply any wooden material. So let's apply this wooden parquet material. All right, so I've rotated it. Now I need to scale it. So I'm just going to scale it to this edge here. Right, so since it is parametric in nature, it will adjust automatically as well. Let's also give the wooden board color to the back panel. Alright, great. That looks perfect. If you'd like, you could just extend the panel a bit to the corners or the edges that is, so that it overlaps correctly. All right, now let's copy this. So I'm just gonna copy this here. Use the scale tool and scale it to this edge. And then scale it on top as well. So you can see it adjusts the panels and also gives the right cut panels wherever necessary. So you can go ahead and finish the model. I will do a time lapse now and finish the model. It's always advisable to stretch one component at a time and then do the other ones.
now I'll show you a cool way using the assembly option from profile builder 3. So if you don't have profile builder, you can skip this video from here on out. But for those who have this plugin and would like to test out assemblies, then stick around. All right, so I'm going to open assemblies. So basically assemblies will help you create railings, wall panels and more. So it's got three main components. One is or three main categories. One is profile member, component and span. So in this case, our profile would be this rectangle here. So I can enter this component here. Since I've already made a mock, I'm going to select this face. And then I'm going to click on the plus button, add profile member. After that, you will need to click on edit profile. And then you will need to click on the plus button here. So let's call this wall panel. So that's our wall panel profile. Let's change the placement point position from center to bottom left and press OK. Before you press OK, you can also add a material. So in this case, it's going to be wooden veneer and press OK. All right. So I've added my profile. Now let's build this assembly. So let's click on build assembly here and just click and place your assembly to create that simple wall panel. Now the problem is it doesn't have these openings here or this sort of a member here. So we will need to add that as a component. So what I need to do is add these members here as vertical members in the component category. So let's go to components. Before that, we'll need to create our component. So let's make our rectangle and snap it to the blue axis and I'm going to snap it here. So this is our rectangle. Let's select this. I click and click on make component. Now you need to set the axis. So let's click on set component axis. So this will be from this point here and now you need to set the path. So the path of this component would be from the center actually. So let's press escape, click on set component. So it would be the midpoint here. So this would be the path of that component. So the red axis goes to the path and make sure the blue axis is always pointed on top. And then click on create. Now we'll enter this group or component and push this up. So the total height would be about one foot. So this is the total height. Let's check the height. Eight inches. So now let's add this component. So let's click on plus button here. Pick from model and select this component. Now let's select this assembly and click on update assembly and see how this looks. And now you can see it's been added here. Now you can give a spacing for these components. So in this case, it's going to be about one foot, six inches. So I'm going to give here one foot, six inches. Now let's create this assembly again. So let's click on build assembly and let's create it like this. All right. So it's coming to life. Now what we need to do is actually move this panel on top by say half inch. So I'm going to go to profile member and you can give an up down offset of say half inch. So now let's select the assembly and click on apply assembly attribute. So now it's moved up by half inch. Now the problem is when you're adding this profile, here, it will not be able to create that gap in between each of these components. To add that gap between each of these components, we will need to go to span. So I'm going to go to span and click on add. Or let's click on edit profile. So this is the profile at the moment. Let's see if you have other profiles. We don't. So we need to create the profile again. So in that case, just enter this component, select this face. So this is a profile, click on edit profile. 
click on plus and call this panel profile move it from the center to the bottom left and press ok all right great so now what i'll do is i will remove the profile member so remove this and now i can click on update so let's click on update and click on yes now we need to adjust some of the settings here so we can give a setback from the start and the end so it's going to be about half inch and half inch like this now let's update this so now you can see it's been updated correctly now there is an additional component that we need to get rid of or we can also create the assembly again so let's click on build and create the assembly again we'll delete these other ones now we need to check if this pan is correct so right now this is about one inch or half inch so we can increase the size of this component and if you want to increase the component you can go here so right now it is about half inch let's draw a line from the center and let's draw a reference line which is half inch here and half inch from here so now if you push this it should be a one inch thick component so we've updated the component let's see how this looks and it has been updated here as well so we need to give the offset again from the bottom so let's go to span and give an offset of about half inch from the bottom all right great finally what we need to do is update this profile better so what i'll do is i'll enter this component this J toggle visibility and i'll push this face up like this and push this face down like this delete this line in between we don't have that line so we can make a profile out of this so let's go to span click on edit profile click on new call this panel profile new and change the placement point to bottom left press ok and now when you build your assembly it should work properly Alright, so there's one last step that we need to do is basically since we've given that profile like this, we don't need to give a offset. So let's go to span and change this to zero. And select this assembly and click on update. Alright, perfect. So we created our wall panels. Finally, one last step here is since this component is about one inch this way we also need to give the component uh, one inch the other way as well so i will enter this component and give about half inch more so now it should work properly let's delete this assembly let's delete all the guides and let's create our build assembly here so let's click once click the second time and click the third time so now it's created properly Ooh, so that was long i hope you guys got an idea of how to create wall assemblies it's also a good idea to apply a material to your assemblies so finally what i'll do is apply a material so go to edit profile and let's give a material so let's give wood veneer it's okay and for the component as well so we can give the material directly on the component so let's use wood veneer let's see if we have wood veneer or let's click on the home tool and use the wood veneer here and now finally when you create the assembly it should work properly how cool is that
So I'm going to go ahead in the time lapse and add this wall panel all around my building. It's also a good idea to save this assembly. So I'm going to click on save and I'll call this wall panel wood veneer. Click on save. Now, if you're lost and if you want to use my assembly, you can click on search. I'll share the assembly with you. Just click on, open that folder, select this assembly. And then you can click on the build assembly option and start building your wall panels. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this video by adding the wall panels. So see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to add the railings for our balcony here. So the first step, what I will do is I'll draw some reference lines. So the railing is going to be inset about two inches from the edge of the slab. So I'm just going to draw those reference lines there. And then we have our line here as well. All right. So again, there are two ways to add your railings, the traditional way and by using some useful plugins. In this case, we will use the Profile Builder 3 plugin to create the railing. So first step, I will show you the traditional way. So you can either model the railing by using the Follow Me tool. So you can draw a line, which is going to be the path. So I'm going to draw a line this way, this way and this way. So this is our path. Now we will need to draw the profiles. So it will be a simple glass profile. So we can draw a base that is. So we can give the dimensions, which is about four inches and width and two inches in depth. Make this a group and move it in place. And then I'm going to offset this, say about half inch and move this line on top, delete this face. So we have a base profile and then we have our path. So before I create the profile, I'm just going to make these two lines and the profile a group. So I'm just going to make it a group and now enter the group. So let's make sure we enter this group. There's J to toggle visibility and we can use the follow me tool. So you can select this line, go to tools, follow me and click on the profile here. So we cannot, couldn't click on the profile because it's a group. So we'll need to explode that group. Let's select the lines, tools, follow me. And click on that profile. There. So it creates the base profile, which is nice. Now the problem is this base profile is touching the line. So what I will do is I will just delete this line here. All right. And I will also move the base profile on top a bit. So let's move it by about one inch for now. We'll move it back down later. So again, let's select the line. Zoom in, go to tools, follow me and click on the base profile. So we created the base profile. Now let's create the glass as well. You can also make this a group and hide it. So again, for the glass, I'm just going to draw a line from the center. So it's going to go about three feet on top and it's going to be about half inch. So I'm going to draw half inch in thickness. So we will need to connect these lines as well. Can delete that line. So again, make sure this rectangle is at the center of that path. I'm just going to move to the center there. And we're going to move it up by one and a half inch or yeah, one and a half inch. So 1.5 inches on top. So now let's select the path. Go to tools, follow me and click on this line there. All right. So we created the railing. Let's enter this railing and press F4. And then you can also give a material. So we can give a material for the glass. And that's how simple it is.
to create your railing. So this is the simple way. You can also go to Windows, 3D Varrows, search for railing, and go to Advanced and make sure you switch on Dynamic Components. So you can download any of these Dynamic Components. Let's download the Dynamic Glass. And let's place it in place. And as you scale it, it will increase the number of panels in between as well. So you can see it increases the number of panels. And then of course you can rotate and copy it and place it in place. So this is the traditional way. Now let me show you the better way, which is by using the profile builder, because in the future, as you keep using more assemblies in profile builder, it will help you model faster as well. So I'm going to delete the railing which we created. So if you don't have the profile builder plugin, you can skip this video from here and just model it using the techniques I thought so far. All right, so let's open profile builder. So you will need to open the assemblies. You will not be using profile dialog. Profile dialog is great to create cornices and more. We won't be using it here for now. So let's use the assembly dialog. So let's open assembly dialog. So this is a simple dialog box. We already have a railing in place. Let me show you how this works. So I'm just going to click on build assembly. And then I'm going to click on this point here. Click on this point here. And finally, finish it by clicking here. So what it does is it will automatically create the angle there, even for our top rail. And also give the gap between the windows at equally proportional distances. So let's learn to create this window. So let's check the height of this window. It's about three, three feet, five inches, three and a half feet. And let's check the profile definitions as well. So let's enter this group. Let's select the profile here. So this is about two inches, two and a half inches by four inches. So pretty much the same what we used. And the railing here is about one inch by one inch. You can you also use one and a half inches? So one inch dia top rail and two inch by four inch bottom rail. So let's delete this and I'll show you how to create that assembly in profile builder. So first thing, we we'll need to draw our profiles. So let's draw our rectangle. So the dimension is going to be four inches, comma two inches, tap enter. Let's make this a group. Let's offset it by half inch. And let's move this line on top. Delete that top line. So we have our U frame. All right, so we have a base profile. Let me hide the wall. And let's draw the glass now. So the glass is going to be from this point, which is going to be about three feet, six inches and tap enter. All right, so now let's draw a rectangle. So you can see this is a rectangle there. Let's snap it to the red axis. And we just draw the rectangle and move it in place first. So let's move to the side here. And then we just have to move this line in by half inch. And then delete these lines here. All right, so this is our glass. Let's make this a group and move it to the center. It's also a good idea to move this line on top. So there's some gap for the silicone to sit for the glass as well. Finally, we need to model the top rail. So let's use the circle tool and give a radius of about one inch. And then of course you can also draw a profile like this. So what we can do is just use the tape measure tool and draw reference lines. So about one sixteenth inch. And then use the line tool and draw the profile. So that's the profile. We can delete this other face. So sometimes this happens when you're drawing in minuscule scale. So in that time you can just shift to palette projection mode and then zoom in. And then delete that line. All right. Let's also delete all our guides. So we've drawn all the profiles. So now we have the base profile and the top profile. So let's add it to the profile members. 
I'm going to create a new assembly. So let's click on new assembly. Call this glass railing. All right. So let's add the profile. So let's click on add profile member. And let's select this. So to select it, you need to click on edit profile. And then you need to enter this group. Double click to select the faces and edges and click on the plus button here. Let's call this the base profile. And also I will center the placement point from center to bottom middle and click OK. So we have a base profile. Now let's add another profile. So let's click on add profile member. And this time I will need to add the top rail. So press escape. Let's enter this group this time. Select this. You can also offset it if you like. So you can give an offset like this and delete that inside face because generally that's how pipes are. So this is our profile. Click on edit profile. Click on plus and call this top rail. And click on OK. So for now we leave it the center, the base point and we'll update it later. So click on OK. So you can see our top rail there. So now we'll need to offset this. So I'm going to give an offset of about three feet and tap enter. So now it's sitting in correctly. So we can also draw this profile. So let's click on build assembly and we can draw this profile like this. How cool is that? So now we need to add the glass. So before we add the glass frame, I will need to add something called spacers, which will hold the glass in between this base profile here. So let's go to component and click on plus and we need to pick a model for the component. So let's draw a spacer. So I'm going to draw a rectangle like this. I'm going to make it a component. So I double click on that face, click on make component and call this spacer. Click on create. And let's move this in by say two inches. So it's about two inch by one inch. So this is our component. Now another important thing that you need to keep in mind is the axis, uh, which is the path of the component. So we will need to set the axis from here. So let's go to tool, click on axis and set it from here. So the red axis is your path. So make sure to specify the path here. And then make sure the blue axis is always pointed on top. Press escape. Sketchup will ask you whether you want to save the new axis. Click on yes. So we've created the spacer as well. Let's add the spacer. So let's click on pick from model and let's select that spacer there. And let's see how this looks. So we can move the spacer out, select this assembly and click on apply assembly attributes. So now we can see that it's been applied, but the axis is coming from here. So we'll need to move to the midpoint. So again, enter the component, go to tools and let's click on axis this time and let's select from the midpoint here. So the red axis and the green axis, press escape. Yes. And now if you update the attribute, it should be in the center. You can also offset it by half inch. So let's click on here up down offset and I'm going to give an offset of about half inch. So now if I update the attribute, it should move up. All right, great. So now we need to give our glass frames in between these spacers. We can also reduce the total depth of the spacer from two inches to one inch. So I'm just going to move in and move this in by one inch. All right. So now let's select this and click on apply attribute. And that's updated it. So now next, let's go to span and finally add our glass profile here. So let's click on plus and let's click on edit profile. Let's click on plus here. So we need to select the face of polyline. So let's enter that group and select the faces and edges and click on plus and call this glass profile. So you can see our placement point in the center. Let's move that to bottom middle. You can also change the material. So let's change the material to translucent glass blue. Press OK. And now it's created that railing. All right. So let's select this glass railing and click on apply attribute. All right, great. So the problem is now the top rail is not sitting on top of the glass. So right now you can see the glass rail is a height is about three and a half feet. So we need to update the offset there. So let's go to profile members. So this is our top rail. 
Let's change the offset by 3 feet 6 inches. And now if I update the attribute, the top rail should go on top. Perfect. Now let's see if we can add a gap between these two glass railings here. And what I'd also like to do is actually move the axis to the center of that spacer. So let's do that quickly. Let's enter this group. Let's draw a line in the center there. And then let's go to Tools, Axis, and let's draw the line like this. So the line goes like that, and the axis is set correctly. Now we can delete that line. And now the spacer is in the center. The axis is in the center of that spacer. All right, so now if I enter this group component, you can see that it's in the center. And now if I update the attribute, you can see our spacer sitting in the center, but the gap between these shutters are still the same. So to give a gap, just go to span. And then we have a setback here. So I'm going to give half inch for the start and half inch for the end. So now if I select the attribute and click on apply, it will give that gap as well. All right, so we're done creating our railing. So now I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete all my profiles as well. Press escape and I'm going to save this profile out. So I'm going to call this glass railing new. You will find it in the exercise files and you can add it to your scene if you like. So now let's press escape or F4 to unhide everything. Now we deleted our reference line. So let's draw the reference line again. So two inches from this edge, two inches from this edge. And finally, a line from here and two inches from this edge. Finally, let's draw our railing that we just created. So let's click on build assembly, click on this point. To the intersection here. Then to this point. And finally here. And then you can press escape to get rid of that command. So you can see that we've created our glass profile. Now, if you'd like to update the span of these glass profiles, so right now you can see it's about close to eight feet. You can do that as well. So let's select the assembly and you can go to component and you can see the spacing, which is set about eight feet. So you can set it to about four feet. And then update the attributes. So select the assembly and click on apply assembly attributes. So now it's added those panels in between, which looks much more realistic. And then make sure to save this assembly in case you want to use it in the future. We've also created some additional assemblies. So if I click on assembly browser, I have this railing assembly here, which I just created. And now if I click on build, let me hide the glass railing first. Let's click on build. Let's select this point. To this point and then let's snap it to the green axis and move it to this point here and then finally here and back in place and press escape so you can see this is a pretty cool railing that i've created i've added various profile members so if i go to profile members you can see it's about 16 profile members in total from the beam, rail top, the rail wires and more. And then we have the component which is the vertical posts in between here and then we have the span as well. So there's a lot of work that went into creating this railing and I will be sharing that with you guys in the exercise files for you to tweak. So you can decide which railing that you like for the space. In this case, I'm just going to go with the glass railing. 
all right so we're done with the railing so i'll see you guys next video cheers hey guys welcome back in this video i'm going to model the site for our project so i'm going to hide the house so let's go to tags here and let's hide the house tags so we have this element that we need to move to a tag so let's do that i'm just going to go to my house tags here and click on add tag i'll call this a dash facade elements now let's check facade elements use the tag tool and assign that let's do the same for the glass and this lower there you can create a separate tag for the balconies or the balcony window create a tag called balconies and then assign balconies using the tag tool to this element here all right so i've written all the house tags now we need to make sure we create a tag for site which we have and it's in the right tag all right so since we already have the line from the cat drawing what we can do is we can simply draw lines in between to create the faces so if i draw lines like this you can see that it starts creating that face So once you've drawn all these lines, you may have to also delete them. So I'm just going to delete all these lines here. This is our site, so you can leave it as is. And then we have our water body here as well. Sometimes if you draw on top of these lines, it also generates a face. You can see this creates a face like this, and then you can delete it. And finally here as well. So this is the traditional way where you can create faces out of AutoCAD lines. Now there are some useful plugins that you can use instead of using the traditional way of drawing lines to create these faces. So we go to extensions, extension arrows, and let's search for make face. And then you can go ahead and use any of these plugins. Now this was a free plugin before, but now it's a paid plugin. So you may have to purchase the plugin to use it. And in my case, I'm using this Sketch Plus plugin for Mind Site Studios. So if you go to View Toolbars, these are the various plugins that come from Sketch Plus. They are pretty useful in working with SketchUp. So this is the command that we'll use called Make Face. So I'm just going to undo all these lines. So I'm just going to press Ctrl Z and all right. So I've undone whatever faces I've created. So to create a face using this command, just enter the group, select all the lines, click on make face and then click on the lines again. So this will automatically create the faces. And then if you select the face, you can see that it is divided the faces as well. Now, some cases it may not have divided, for example, here. So in that case, you can just sort of draw a line around it or just check where the line is not intersecting. So you can see there's a gap here. So if we extend this, that should divide the faces. What I also like to do is select all the lines, right click and reverse face. All right, so I've made my face. Now what I'll do, I'll start grouping these faces. So this is the water body. This is the road pathway. This is the additional site here. And this is the neighboring site. Also, this has to sort of. So sometimes you need to make sure that before you group, the lines are separated. Okay, so we have a line there. So now this should separate that. So let's group this. This is the neighboring site. This is the compound wall. And this is the big site that we have. So I'm just going to group that. All right, great. Now you can apply materials from SketchUp. So if you go to materials here, let's go to home. So these are the various materials that we have in our scene. You can also add materials from SketchUp. So if I go to vegetation, so let's go to landscape. So you can see we have some various grass materials. So you can just add it. Now in this case, I've sort of made a main group and then nested all these groups and say that. So I will explode the main group, so right click explode. And then I will use this 
texture and apply it on the relevant faces. Let's apply a water body. So let's go to water and apply this on the water body there. Now let's go to our tags and switch on the house. Alright. It's a good idea to also create a face for this part. So let's see what we are missing. So you can just draw a line in between to sort of create that face in between. And we can give another material for this site. So let's go to landscape and let's get this ground cover. We have an extra face here, so you can just select that and delete it. Finally, our road, so we can give a material for our road as well. So, we have various materials. Let's use let's use the same material, and we can change it later. All right. So now let's switch on the house tag, and we have done modeling the site. But that's not quite done because this is just two D. And let's create the three D elements. In this video, I'll show you how to use assemblies to model compound walls, street curbs, these waterfront walls and more super fast. Now, we will not be creating the assemblies from scratch. We'll be using the ones I created and I will share these files with you and you can use it in your projects as well. So let's click on open the assembly dialog box. Click on search. So you can see these are the various models that I created. So let's start with this straight curve. So let's open that. So it's loaded it in. So you can see it comes with a component and a span. Doesn't have a profile member. So it just works with these two parameters. Now let's click on build assembly. And you can start building it like this. So you can see it starts creating that profile. Now since we are drawing from the left to right, the curb is on the other side. So let's draw it from the other side. So if you draw from here, that should fix that. And let's draw it till the edge of this road. Alright, great. And then you can also wrap it around if you like. So it creates that perfect curve. Let's do the same for this line as well. So let's click on build and then build it till here. Perfect. Now let's do it again from right to left so you'll need to click here this time and draw to the edge of this line here by the way it's a good idea to check your tags as well so right now we are drafting in the undrafted tag so let's open this so you can see it's drafted in the undrafted tag and also we will need to move all these materials inside the main a side tag so let's hide the house tag again. Let's select all these elements, use the tag tool, select a site, use the tag tool and then assign these to that tag. So if you hide it, all of it gets hidden. All right, so I've done creating the roadside curb. Now let's create the compound wall. So again, we'll use the assembly. So let's open the assembly dialog box. This time I will need to search for the compound wall assembly. So let's click on search. Now, if you don't find these assemblies, you can just load my exercise file folder with assemblies in it and you will find these in. So let's click on compound wall this time. And let's start clicking by using the build assembly. You can also use the build along path. For example, we have a line here. So if I enter this group and just select these lines here and click on build along path it will create the compound wall along that path as well how cool is that it also creates a post in between span of around 16 feet so it makes life much more easier for you guys all right so we made a compound wall now this compound wall is made inside this face. So what I will do is I will select this compound wall, press Ctrl X and then go back and click on edit paste in place. And now I can move it in a bit. All right, perfect. I'll also close these icons. Sketch plus icons. I won't be using it for the rest of the video. 
and then we can also create a wall along for the waterfront so let's search for assembly let's click on waterfront wall and then again just click on build and then you can start building away your assembly or what preferred way is to build along path so let's press j to toggle visibility now this is not a group so let's make it a group and press j to toggle visibility and then let's just deselect the top line so i'm just going to deselect holding control shift to deselect all these lines here so this way you do not have to click and model the waterfront wall rather you can just select the profile and click on build along path so now you can see that we created a nice wall along this path what i also like to do is just enter the group remove this from the main group make sure to remove both profiles so it has a top profile and a bottom profile so let's select both Control x let's escape and click edit paste in place and now we can move it in all right perfect we can also add a deck for the waterfront so let's click on search this time i will search for deck or dock path that is so i guess this is the final one so let's click on water dock path click on build assembly and then if you start building you can create a dock this how cool is that you can also move it in place and move it down a bit let's also create some fire pits here so let's go back and let's select that waterfront wall and this time i will just create a circle delete the face inside select that circle path and click on build along path so you can see that creates a cool seating around our fireplace now let's bring in our house tag this seems a little too big so i'll delete it make this circle a bit smaller and move it here and then click on build along so let's go to assemblies and click on build along. yeah perfect so they can have a nice seating around a fireplace you can also build a swimming pool here so let's create a rectangle like this and let's make this a group let's give another material for this group so i'm going to go to water let's use water light blue this time or this one water pool looks better so let's apply it on that all right this looks good now the problem is when you make this a group and if you hide it you can see the rectangle goes away so it's a good idea to copy this explode it so i'm just going to right click explode then delete that face inside and then click go to edit and click on paste in place so now it's also created that opening there and then you can enter the swimming pool and give a depth and delete the top face if you like so a pool inside as well we can edit that later if you feel it's a little too big you can also sort of move it in always get in the habit of using groups I'll just align it to this holes here and then move these edges in as well all right so i'm arbitrarily designing the site plan it's better to have the site plan already designed in CAD. But in case you're short on time and you want to show the client something, it also helps to design it directly in SketchUp. And I would highly recommend using reference images as well. I would like to separate the path here. So I'll just draw a rectangle this way. Separate the path. And I'll give another material for our crown. All right, great. And I'll give another material for our flooring here as well. So I'm just making rectangles to divide the face and then selecting another material. All right, great. So you've done pretty much most of the modeling in SketchUp. So I'll see you guys in the next video.
pictures. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create staircase railings. And we're going to, of course, create it the traditional way and then use also some plugins to create the railings. So let's enter the staircase component. So you can see it's a component. So if you edit one, it'll edit the ones above as well. So the traditional way is to use the follow me tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint here to the midpoint here. All right. So that is one line there and I'm just going to move it up. I'm going to move it up by say three feet. So you need at least three feet in height for a decent stair railing. Then I can extend it down. So if you sort of move down it moves along the tangent and you can move it down a bit let's do the same here as well let's check the height it has to be at least three feet it is and then i can extend the line out like that all right so we have our lines i'm just going to select these lines and then move it in let's move it in by say two inches all right, so we have a line which is in inset by two inches. And then finally, we need to draw a line from the wall or from this line to the wall edge. So that should suffice. Let's see from, yeah, so that should work well. And then we can delete this line. Let's do the same for the line here as well. So I'm just going to draw a line like that. Okay, so it shouldn't extend too much. So around here should. Work well. All right. So we have our path. Now we need to create the profile. So I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to give a radius of about one inch. So we get a diameter of one inch and I'm just going to move this line in a bit. All right. Great. So now it's a very simple process to create your railing. Just select the path like that and then just go to tools. Follow me and then click on the shape. So that will create a railing just like that. So it should add it on top as well since it's a component. So that's the traditional way. You can also go ahead and add some supports in between. So the span of three feet, you can just add some supports here if you like, but this should do the work. So this is the traditional way. Now I'll show you some plugins. So if you go to extension, extension arrows. All right, and let's search for railing. And these are the various plugins that you can use. So the free plugin is Mage Railing. So you can go ahead and download this plugin and I'll show you how to use it. There are some other plugins as well, which are paid, but I mostly use this plugin and also the profile builder. All right, so once you've downloaded the plugin, you can go ahead and go to extensions and you will find Mage Rail here. So you can see you can set certain parameters. So let's set the rail height to about three feet and it comes with various types. Now from D to H is paid. So we can use from B to C. So let's try using A and see what kind of a railing that is. And you can also give an offset from the run and a perpendicular offset as well. We don't need offsets for now. So let's click OK. And let's start by just clicking on the midpoints here to start creating our railing. Now, if you accidentally click on the wrong one, you can press escape to go back and then go ahead and click on the right number of steps. So I'm giving it at a gap of about three steps. Okay. And then Let's see where our final rating can be added. Maybe about here. And then to finish, you just need to double click. And it would create a railing. Now I accidentally created a railing there. So I will just undo. And double click here to finish. Alright, so that's our railing and then we can sort of move it in a bit. You can hide the other one for now. You can also make it a group and hide it. 
So there are various railings, but you'll have to create it from scratch. So let's try the other ones as well. I'll just show you how that looks. So extensions, mage rail, three feet. Let's try B. This time I won't be creating all the style. Let's just create it here. See how this looks. So this is B, which is also nice. And let's go to extensions. And let's try C. So you just need to keep clicking. Create those posts. And you just need to double click to finish the rail. So this is a glass railing. Pretty cool. You can also, of course, do this, create it on the stairs using the technique I just showed you. So let me just delete all of these. Let's enter the stair, delete this as well. And now I'm going to show you how to use the profile builder assemblies. So if you click on open assembly dialog and go to the exercise files, you will find the stair railing which I created on Profile Builder. So let's open this. And you can just click on Build Assembly or you can also click on Build Along Path. So since we have a path, but the problem is this will not work. So let me just delete this line here. And delete this line here. Let's select these two lines. And this line. And let's click on Build Along Path. Now you can see it creates a railing. And it creates that an offset of about three feet from this railing. So ideally, this line should be at the base. So let's move this line down out here. And then let's click on build along part. And it creates a proper railing with also some supports in between. I'm going to delete this start here because I don't need it. Let me just Go back out of the group and let's enter this component and sort of move it in. It's going to move it in like that. All right, great. And sometimes it's not too perfect. You can see it actually has three components. So this is a general component that comes in between the supports, and then we have the start and the end component. So these components do not work on a slope as compared to on a straight line. So I'm just going to move it in place to the bottom of that circle here. And then just move it along like this. This J to toggle is ready and then move this in. So some amount of adjustments is required. All right, so we're done creating our rail using Profile Builder. Let me show it to you again. So you can also create it along the horizontal line. So you can see how this looks. So you have your supports in between, the start one, the end component. So these are the supports which comes in between. Then the start and end and then we have a profile which is this top rail. So these are the various ways. Now if you want me to create a specific tutorial on how I created this assembly, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to share that as a bonus. Alright, so we need to make some adjustments. Maybe just add a top room for our stair there. And then also add a wall for this railing to be attached to. And we are almost done with our residence. We also need to add some wall panels here. So let's do some final adjustments in the next video. And also model the site. So see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to do some final adjustments for our house. So we just need to add a roof or a slab to cover the staircase area. So I'm just going to check the height. So right now it's about 30 feet. So we can give it only to about 35 feet, which is the top of the slab. So I'm going to just draw a reference line to about 35 feet. Now I'm just going to move this slab in a bit. It's also a good idea to just check the headroom. So I'm just going to draw a tape measure tool from there to the bottom. We just orbit inside the house. So this is about eight and a half feet. So that should work well. So let's see till where we can extend the slab. So seven feet is the ideal headroom. So to about this step should work well. So I'm just going to enter this group, move to the mid midpoint there. So now if I measure from here to here, we have seven and a half feet, which is ideal headroom. 
Now let's just draw a rectangle on top of the slab. Let's draw it correctly. Make this a group and offset it. Offset by 6 inches. Leave this inside face. And then move this up to about this reference line. And then move it down by 6 inches. Alright. And let's make this a group. And then draw a rectangle on top of that group. Make this a group and then extend this out about 6 inches. What I also like to do is sort of extend this out this way. So this is about 2 feet. So we can extend it 2 feet on all sides. And then we can also give an opening here, but since that will not be seen in the render, it should be fine. Right. Uh, 2 feet seems a bit too much. So I'm just going to give an uh, offset of about 1 foot. Alright, great. And then finally we need to add some panels here. So you can just enter this group here, copy it, the other side. Then of course extend it out and wait for the flex tools magic to work. Alright, and I'm also going to copy this on top. So let's move it on top like this. Make sure to move it to the endpoints and then scale it to this point. If you don't find the endpoint, you can also activate the X-ray mode. Yep, that's the endpoint there and just move it up. Alright, so we've pretty much covered most of it. What I also like to do is just apply this material to our walls here. And that should sort of complete it. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Now this video is taken from the complete Onscape 4 SketchUp course. And if you'd like to buy the full course, head to the link in the description. Now that is where we have about additional 4 hours of Onscape content, which will take you step by step from being an Onscape beginner to an Onscape pro in about 4 hours. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can keep producing high quality content for you guys. I hope you have a great day ahead and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.